Hey, Mike, what have you heard of the homebrew podcast? I totally have. Get it, nerds. We're hunting space dinosaurs. The homebrew podcast is the best adventure. It's published weekly and is everywhere podcasts can be found. They're veteran Dungeons and Dragons player who love phenomenal stories, endearing characters and a good adventure. They're currently engaged in a reimagined fifth edition sci-fi campaign called Absurdism and a Millennium Abroad. Whether you're new to D&D, a seasoned DM, somewhere in between, or just enjoy a good story, you've come to the right place. Join them while they explore the universe and push the boundaries. So explain to me, Mike, what does the fifth edition mean? They're using the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons rule set put out by Wizards of the Coast. Catch it online today at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. You can find them at facebook.com forward slash homebrew podcast, or you can check them out at twitter.com forward slash the homebrew DD, or again, anywhere you get your podcast feeds. Why don't you just go to https the homebrew podcast.com? Well, that would be a good idea, Mike. You can find them there also. You go, hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of unidragon.com? Have I ever heard of Unidragon.com? Yes, Unidragon.com. Why, yes, I have heard of Unidragon.com. That's the puzzle dude. The puzzle dude, that's correct. He has tons of puzzles. And of course, he is the best and original wooden puzzles. Yeah, have owls. Guess what is the number one best-selling puzzle? The owl. Do you think you had anything to do with that? No, everybody loves Al. Well, right now, you can get 40% off in stock if you go to unidragon.com forward slash products forward slash enchanting Al. You need to make sure you get yours today. Now, they also have two to six days for shipping and domestically ship within the United States. They have a great customer support. If you ever have any questions regarding your puzzle, except for how to put it together, you can email them at care at unidragon.com. If you want to get 10% off, you can use our code Dragon Tech. Again, that's Dragon, D R A G O N Tech T E C H, for a ten percent off discount. Now, if you want the original, go to Unidragon.com. You are a fakes. Only get your wooden puzzles at Unidragon.com. Get them all. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, have you heard of the Hidden Compass, the podcast? Why, yes, I have. Hidden Compass, the podcast, is about stories and storytellers at the frontiers of courage and curiosity. Join Hidden Compass co-founders and podcast co-hosts Sabine and Savani as they narrate stories from their award-winning magazine, and then go behind the scenes in interviews with each storyteller to see what inspired them to venture to the frontiers of courage and curiosity. Hidden Compass is for the journalists chasing big questions and meaningful exploration. It is for the reader hunting profound stories that immerse, inspire, and inform. It is for anyone aching for substance and longing to celebrate collective human endeavor. Here, the nuance of the world is within reach. Hold on to it. Listen wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe. Great, Mike. I'm going to subscribe today. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio, and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn... You now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour 
talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time oh, Radio. Wow. What's that? You like our new screen that we have up here? Yeah, I look, I look really relaxed. Yeah. So, so we are streaming on Twitter. Uh, brand new, uh, exciting announcement to do. So, if you want to go to Twitter uh, forward slash Tech Time Radio, you can watch our live stream there, or you can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch TV, and of course KKNW 1150 AM has both the audio and the stream. And if you listen to their commercials, they now have an app that you can load. Mm. And you can listen to it on your uh, Amazon devices. So there you go. Woo-hoo. Welcome to Tech Time Radio. This is hour two. If you missed hour one, you need to go back and watch it. We had Trina Martin on there. Uh, we had a Gamer Time segment about some PS4 information regarding their CMOS battery. I'm sure that's really exciting to people. That's and, really exciting. And we had some great human interaction regarding choices that you talked about on Mike's Mesmerizing Moments. Uh, yeah. And you found out. The mic got engaged. So if you're on hour two, didn't we air, talk about that last week? No, we did not. It was only, it was only this. It was yeah. just in the studio. It was not on the air. Oh, yeah, we yeah, did. We forced got engaged. To. Yeah, you did. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, welcome to the Tech Time Radio, uh, the show that makes you go um. Technology news of the week. We are on hour two. We are on from four to six p.m. on Saturdays in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're catching us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, not 4 to 6 p.m., and Sunday, you're catching a rebroadcast. So if you're catching a rebroadcast, all you got to do is go to techtimeradio.com. That's techtimeradio.com <laughs> to stay up on all- If you're catching a rebroadcast, you can call us, but nobody's going to answer. <laughs> That's right. You're not going to be able to get on the air. So you can go to techtimeradio.com and listen to what everybody else got to have an opportunity to take a look and listen to. We're a two-hour technology show that talks about current technology without having to geek out. We are ahead of the mainstream media with all of our technology news. What's really awesome is we do our shows on Saturdays, mm-hmm. and then when you see Monday and Tuesday and Wednesdays, our stories that we talk about are all of a sudden blowing up. Yeah, I, I look back and I'm like, "Yep, well, we talked about it on Saturday." Sometimes we sometimes we grab a story like weeks before the mainstream. Media yeah, it'll be two or three over. weeks all yeah. of a sudden, and then it gets out there. So you absolutely really cool. want to stay with our technology show. On our second hour here, we have, of course. Ask the Expert. We bring back one of our favorite guests, Nick Espinoza, the CSO and founder of Security Fanatics. We talk about a significant Apple breaches and some um, Apple software information that is going to be great to talk about. I know everybody always thinks uh, those big old commercials back in the 80s and 90s where I'm a Mac and I'm a PC and everybody thought that the Mac was... Was that the Justin Long commercials? Yes, yes. And you know what? They used to say, oh, I'm a Mac. I'm a PC. And I, I, I never a, get hacked. I, I, I'm always Whoa. secure. I don't have to worry about updates. And we're going to be talking about all the security breaches that Apple is having. So let me tell you, uh, if you have an Apple PC and you haven't upgraded it to the OS 15, if you haven't upgraded it to a bunch of security right. upgrades, you got to get on you, that USB-C thing. Too. Yeah, and you know what? Now, uh, as we talked about in the first hour, if you're going to have a uh, Apple product in 2024, you're going to have to have a USB-C device because Apple to has to charge change it. it. With. All right. You can call the show at 425-373-5527 or 188-298-KKNW. That's 188-298-5569, and we'll get you on the show. Um, welcome back, Mr. Gorday, for our second hour. As we start each of our second hours, we start with our conversation cards. Yes. Brought to us by Love Shack Live, which you can hear every Thursday afternoon from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. right here on AM 1150 KKNW. And a programming reminder, Thursday, October 14th, Mike Gorday will be on the show with Tom and Stacy. That's will. right. That's what, right. Do you, do you know what you're going to be talking about yet? Uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, We've talked a little bit about it, but I think we're going to be talking about narcissism in relationships. Oh, narcissism in relationships. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. You know, because we're all, we're all, we're all selfish. We're all narcissists okay. to some extent, but we're talking about true narcissist, the, the textbook version of a narcissist, which is representative of a very small portion of the unit of the population. Okay, cool. It's mostly men. Mostly men, really? Yeah. How about that one gal that uh, is in the, like the lawsuit? I can't remember her name. She's being like sued, and she said that she was the best CEO. Oh, she's a psychopath. Okay, so she's 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 not a narcissist. She's just well, a I don't psychopath. Know. I, don't, I don't know, but uh, a lot of the behaviors that she that she presents is psychopathic and narcissistic in behavior. So yes, so there's a good chance that she and that those females represent a very smaller number in the population than males. All right. All right, here's our question for everybody. David's on the board. He's ready to go here. Mike's up first. If you could wake up 
to breakfast in bed anywhere in the world, where would it be? Uh, this is this is easy. Okay, this is easy for this you. This is so easy. Where would that be? Because this is where I want to end up before I get Actually, too old. I bet you I know this. Where? You're going to be on a beach. That's right, in the Caribbean somewhere. In, in the Caribbean somewhere. It doesn't make any difference. But you just want to wake up on a beach in the Caribbean, nice Bahamas, and warm. Bahamas, Costa Rica, somewhere where it's tropical and there's a crystal clear beach and some palm trees swaying in the breeze, and I don't have to worry about going to work. Or, yeah. Now, now let me ask you: If you're going to wake up there, are you going to fall asleep there too, on the beach? Oh heck yeah! So you fall asleep on the beach. You sleep overnight, everything's nice and warm, yeah. and then you wake up in the morning and you're right there. It, it, yeah, it's almost it's almost a big enough draw to where I would I would be happier being homeless in, in the Bahamas than having a house here. <laughs> in the Seattle market? <laughs> in the Seattle area. <laughs> you could probably not, sell your Seattle, house. The... Seattle, Seattle is a really beautiful place, but my, my, my dream is in the Caribbean. All right. Okay, David, you're up. Where would you wake up for breakfast? I'm going to go kind of, you know, in a fantasy dreamland and go with uh, Melbourne, Australia. Oh, Australia. Okay. Yeah. Why Melbourne? Because that's the main city and, you know, or maybe travel down to Sydney and go check out the opera house after I decide to get up out of bed and have for afterwards. You want to go to Walla Walla? Uh, no. <laughs> Walla Walla, Washington? Oh, wait. That's in Washington. What <laughs> yeah. am I thinking? Yeah, that uh, is walk in Walk about Creek. Oh, Walk oh, about Creek. Okay, yeah. I was going to say Walla Walla. <laughs> that's on that nobody's list. That's Let me tell no- <laughs> you what to wake up to. <laughs> yeah, either Melbourne or Cindy pretty much. <laughs> yeah, okay. oh, sorry, Walla Walla. Okay, I want to go now, walk about. <laughs> I'm going to get some emails this week about. Yeah, here we go. Why are you so mean, to, are you so mean to Walla Walla? All right, so if I could wake up any place, it would be in Botswana, Africa. You've been there. I have, and I've actually had this morning, right? I have woke up. In Africa, beautiful, nice little, uh, you know, nice little area that's taken care of in a little village, and then have fresh coffee that was picked, picked the night before or the day of, and roasted, and then French pressed, so that I'm sitting there looking out at the beautiful African safari land, taking a look at all the animals, and having a nice fresh coffee. That would be my place to wake up to. Awesome. I've done it a couple times. Let me tell get you. eaten by a lion. Well, I wouldn't get eaten by it because I'm going to be in a village, so I'll be still safe. Eaten but, by mosquitoes. Uh, there is a lot of mosquitoes there, but not in the morning. That's Dengue I'm fever, up. buddy. Dengue That's right. fever. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, that gets us through. <laughs> Let's uh, start our technology show right now. With I'm going to go for scurvy. So Okay. With our first yeah. segment, we call Letters. All right, these, of course, in our letter segment, we are talking about emails, scams, and phishing attempts that have been sent to yours truly, Nathan Mum, during this last week. All right, we got Friday. Wait, wait. What's that? We should talk about my... Okay, so talk about... We were talking about this off the air. Vishing email from my phone. I got a voicemail this week that was from the Department of Homeland Security. Okay. That the courier that I hired was caught at the border with the drugs. With the drugs. <laughs> With the drugs. With the drugs. Yeah. It was caught at the border. Was that Mexican border or Canadian border? Uh, they didn't specify. Because you're in Washington, so uh, I would yeah, take I'm, that as Canadian. I'm, I'm I'm basically, I guess, pretty pretty prolific. So wherever it could have been Mexico, it could have been because you know I'm all over. Okay, but so they got they caught my curry. <laughs> they caught your curry. And what did the FBI want to do with you then? They just said call us now so you can clear this up. Oh, called it, and they gave you a number that you could call. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you call the number? No. I love calling those but, numbers. But you know, it was it was of course it was an electronic voice. So they do oh, this they it wasn't all, even it wasn't even a real voice. No, they do this they do Hi, this they do this, this all the time the with FBI. my social security. Yeah. Yeah. Your social security number has been disabled. What what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always like that. F B I. So yeah. the, whatever space they did in the automated uh, voice deal, I it's know. like it's too long. It's too, F- yeah. B- yeah. I. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was that was my favorite this but week. You know what? You're gonna have to. We'll have to figure out well, a way to get that. I'll show it to you. Okay. At, at our post uh, dinner wrap up, we'll have to listen to that and see if we can get some audio. Yeah, that's hilarious. Maybe play it next week. That's that is hilarious. All right. So I received. Um, so so to my carrier, I'm sorry you got caught. <laughs> your carrier. <laughs> you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> a little Breaking Bad right there. You're yeah, like, yeah. Sorry. That's you're right. On your own. You're on your own. Okay. I received a new voicemail message. All right, a new voicemail <laughs> message from 946 here. To play the voicemail message, open the attachment and log in with your office email and authentication 
access to receive your voicemail message. See, it's the courier. So that's another, the courier calling you. This is from Dino at Aviation News Dash Online Five Seven Three at Gmail dot com. Wow! So they, that's that. That was where. Well, it was that sent tells from. you they're they're totally into their Microsoft there. <laughs> yeah, at Gmail dot com. Gmail. Yeah. So it's the only yeah. So as a technical person, you don't send an email that says that you need to log in with your Microsoft email account when you have a Gmail address on there. First yeah, sign. you would look for. A live account. Yeah, or... yeah. Two competitors, you probably wouldn't have the same one. All right, you're up next. All right, this one's. <laughs> <laughs> you one's... got some good ones, too. I got some good ones. This one's from Innovate Lab, and that's I N O V number eight. Oh, lab. oh, Inno... oh eight Innovate. Lab. Okay. Innovate Lab. All right. And, and it was a hello at innovatelab.com, which, hey, that's. that's you Maybe know... legit. <laughs> <laughs> You're unsubscribed though. That's that's the oh, title. That's the You're title. Unsubscribed. So I got unsubscribed. What? Yeah. Say hey. That's how he starts out the that's email. Right. Hey, I reached out to you a couple of times, but didn't hear back, and realized I may have jumped the gun and assumed you were ready to scale your revenue through an efficient email cart marketing campaign. Boy, they're just really guilting you right now. Oh, I, I felt guilty. My intent is not to be a pain, so this will be my last follow up. Oh, because he unsubscribed I, me. Yeah, that's he's, he's threatening me. But if I'm mistaken and you are open to connecting, please send me a quick email or book, that's capital B. Capital B, book. Book a time on my calendar. Either way, I wish you all the best. Cheers, Abib Avzal. Oh, sounds legit. Yes, so Abib, he was very angry at you, yeah, apparently. I, he sent me some emails I must not have taken care of. I huh? know. you. You're. He was like threatening you. Yeah, let You're, me just tell you, you get, I get, you don't I, get I, a service anymore. You know what? I, I get every email now because we do this deal. So I get I like know, yeah. I get like 150 spam emails into so, my main email account. That's right. So everybody on Earth should be doing the opposite of Nathan: unsubscribing and not don't doing any of these. Do anything. Don't click on all Ignore these. Ignore these emails. Get them routed to your junk email folder. Do not click on links. Do not do anything that they're threatening. Don't don't call them. Don't text them. Don't s- sign up with your Microsoft account. Yeah, d- don't do any of those. Don't right? do any of those. Well, okay, but you know what? Lynn left me a voice message. So I got another a, one. I got a picture here of Lynn. That's so, the courier. So <laughs> is that the courier too? Yeah. Lynn left me a voicemail message. Now she, Lynn she, is. She, <laughs> she looks. She looks like she's on the bad end of a. A big weekend. Uh, a binger uh, yeah. went bad, <laughs> she right? Looks, she looks like she might have been a, at a bachelorette party for yeah. a little bit too long. Yes. Now, let's take a look at uh, Lynn's email. I don't have the chance to read in Lynn's email, but clearly, you see the, the email address up there? You see how large that is? Wow. She's got a lot of letters and numbers in her name. So, yeah. So, poor Lynn here has JW2S95YH9 through the whole thing. At, at, EasyDating.net. Easy dating. Uh huh. Well, uh, yeah. that's what she looks like. Yeah, there you go. All you got to do is click on this message here or load their app so that I can talk to Lynn. Oh, well. So they want me I to think load you the app. Do that. So when you go and you click on the app, it's actually some app that has been approved <laughs> for the Apple Store. Really? So, yeah. So, literally, the, if I clicked on that and downloaded it now. Man, Apple's it, just. They just approve everybody they just, now. Yeah, wow. They, they have just, no standards. Yeah, and so I could download that, and then I guess Lynn would leave me the voice message that she left me. I think me. it was nice that she left you a picture of, of a really bad <laughs> uh, selfie where like part of her face is hidden by her phone, and the rest of her face is hidden by this hair that looks like was... Like, like, she's in. In, like, like she's in a uh, 80s rock band. Yeah, she does look like an 80s rock band. All right, you're up next. <laughs> this, one, this one's pretty awesome, too. Okay. So this is from... Mehu, M E H U, Dick dot Mehu uh-huh. at ntlworld dot com. Okay, no subject. Okay, good day. I sent you an email this morning. Kindly check your email box. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. The whole message. <laughs> and I spent... he sent you an email telling he sent you an email. Yes. Yeah, so I went through my whole email. <laughs> I went through find... everything. I Did didn't you... find no no email. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do to the poor guy. He said he sent me an email earlier. He didn't tell me what this email was even, about. I'm not even sure what kind of... What scam what, is he trying to what, put? Is he trying to get you to reply to this? What? Maybe he's like, well, they're going to say, hey, what? I'm sorry, what email did you send that I missed that you're reminding I, me that I have an email to look at? I think that's it because I went through and I looked through everything. 
And I just really wanted to respond to him and tell him, I'm so sorry, I didn't see that email. Could you resend it to me again? But I did not do that. So you actually had a psychological reaction to this. I did. Can I actually you explain went, that a little bit? Can you explain what you felt when you read this? What I this, felt when I read this it. Is really, this is really what this is about. This so is, it was a scam. So I knew immediately it's a scam, right? Uh-huh. I don't think the guy is legit. I, I've never heard of that company. I've never done any business with that company. I have no idea why he would send me an email that said that he sent something sooner. But I went through. Because, you know what, it was kind of just an odd enough email uh-huh. that I went through to see if he actually sent me something so that if I could have clicked on it, knowing that it would be a part of this segment. In a real life scenario, I would have just deleted the email and said, forget you, I don't have time, so this is stupid. So he, he actually engaged your curiosity and maybe a little bit of scarcity thinking. He did only you, because you know I have is, a radio right? show that I would like to see if I had an existing email that I could have then printed. I think out it was and awesome it. that he's like, "Good day, I sent you an email." Yeah, he, by email. Yeah, he could have just told me he, that that here's the information. And, yeah, he should all have right, here we go. You. Maybe he should have gotten Lynn to tell you. So I, I got I got career. one here. Spin to win. I can grab a three hundred and fifty percent bonus on my first deposit if I decided to, and they'll throw in fifty five free spins on an online casino that is not <laughs> legit that I could deposit money through PayPal and a bunch of other opportunities that was available at octra one twy dash y a s s eleven dot twenty two at Google Groups dot com. That's awesome. So yeah. somehow he subscribed me to whatever this Google group is, maybe he put my email address in there. And he wants me to have the ability to gamble with a 350% bonus and 55 free spins. That's awesome. You know you know what's horrible about this? What? Do you remember those late night TV commercials? Yeah. For the infomercials. Whatever, infomercials. Yeah, that was the best time to watch them. Yeah. So After we, WWF they're wrestling. They're so dumb. They're so dumb. Yeah. Right, and I used to I used to like watch these people, and they have like these actresses that are fake surprised, yeah. that like last for five minutes. Like, oh, oh my god, look at that! Nice, I, can't, I right? can't believe they cut through this. So here's why the, I'm relating this to this. Okay. The problem with the infomercial, I realized that they keep making these infomercials because people are actually buying these things. Oh yeah, I'm sure. These types of emails that you're talking about, people are actually clicking. Yeah, on. of course. Well, I could win something. That I, is, I can gamble my money away stop and I'm doing that. I'm going to be the it. one winner that's going to win it. Now, let me just tell you, if you're playing any third-party fake casinos, non-regulated on the internet, they're never going to have you win anything. Of because they're not. automatically going to take your, taking your yeah, money. Yeah, because all they have to do is put a JavaScript app or an HTML-based app up there to grab your money. All right, here's the last one. Here's the last one. This okay. one's awesome. This one's from Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong? Uh, Tom, you mean of Chi-Chi Chong? Chong? Chong, yes. Oh, okay. I know Tommy Chong. Yeah. Do okay. you? I, I used to watch. Uh, no, not personally, okay. but I used to watch. So this is this is the actual email is office sla- or office dash one at m a s e p t fifteen dot com. Oh, it must be legit. Yeah, MSP15. That's totally Tommy Chong's email. email. I'm sure it is. I can respond to him <laughs> right now. Guess what the subject is? What's that? Almost dying was the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, well, that's a real uplifting way yeah, to start. And that it's message. got a it's got a really good picture of Tommy Chong looking looking like. Uh, why the f are you taking a picture <laughs> of me? He does look yeah. like he's gonna punch you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's like, get out of here. I used to believe in CBD. Tommy Chong's face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Now he doesn't believe in CBD? Uh, I believed in the power of this natural miracle, and I want everyone to try it. <laughs> I can't even read it. Okay, well, hey, so. Uh, but it, then something changed. Oh, something changed. Yeah. He's no longer it, doing marijuana, it, really? Lo- no, I, I swear, he looks really confused. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly the story is, I was hearing from people started sounding different. People have been reaching out to me every day. At Every that email, day. at that email address, that's why he's confused. Okay, he's they tell confused. me that CBD isn't working as well as they had hoped. Uh-oh. Click here to find out what you need to oh. do. All righty, okay. I, I so Cheech maybe I'll get Cheech. You, so you're telling me <laughs> Cheech and Chong aren't doing marijuana anymore, but they're using this new thing because people are sending me email. He days. doesn't believe in CBD anymore, oh. so apparently he's not. He's not. That's how we build his whole reputation. He's not, on. Yeah, he's not smoking a. A joint well, anymore. Know. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we're gonna go to commercial break. When we come on, thanks, Tommy <laughs> Chong, for for your email. I yeah. really appreciate. We're that. not gonna have any joints, but we will have Nick Espinosa joining us on our next segment. Here, we're gonna be talking about right. apple breaches. So that should have be we, exciting. Have we had any whiskey that he's tasted on the show yet? Uh, you know, I tried to actually. You know what? 
I'm going to talk to you about something because I tried to send him some whiskey, and he says he's from Chicago. He doesn't live in Chicago. I tried to deliver him whiskey on Wines and More and a couple other different areas to have him uh-huh. taste out some whiskey. I put in his address because he gave me his address. It was like two bunks nowhere to land, and the, and the subscriber said, yeah, we don't deliver there yet. Oh, <laughs> so, so he's out in the middle of nowhere. But, yeah. but have we tried any of his whiskey? No, I still have it at home. All right, uh, so you... I, I have a list of like thirty whiskeys that are queued up. So okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have that whiskey when he's on the show one of these days. Cool. All right, we're gonna be back right after this break. That's all I care about. <laughs> Upper Left Corner is a PNW true crime podcast now streaming on all major podcast platforms. If you get excited when your favorite true crime podcast tells a story about a place that you've been to or the town that you live in, then Upper Left Corner podcast is for you. Each week, I tell you a story of a crime that has taken place in the PNW and give you background about the town the crime occurred in. If you like true crime, check out Upper Left Corner podcast now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and more. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as... House keys. Lawn and garden. Plumbing. Electrical. Hardware. Grills. Outdoor living supplies. And even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place. With the helpful hardware, folks. So look at that. I'm going to keep this picture. You like that picture? (laughs) Your CBD? Yeah, this is like this is like the best picture of him going. What? (laughs) All right. uh, Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We are going to go right into our next segment. Ask the expert. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. You're still saying the title. I did. I thought <laughs> you, you've was done bad. that three times I, today. <laughs> I was really good at that, too. I'm going to get dinged on our uh, yeah. production We're meeting. We're going to talk about that on Thursday. I'm man. sure I'll get yelled at from that. I'm going to give I'm going to give Emily us a will bad be all rating. over me. You're going to give us a bad rating? I'm just going to just give you a three for that. Right? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, welcome back. We are going to get our, our security expert up. Nick Espinosa is joining us all the way from Chicago, but it's not really Chicago. Yes, I, as I did try to no. do my... De- Delivery, right? Hey now. <laughs> yeah, you hold you hold on. I am forty five minutes away from O'Hare Airport. Thank you very much. Okay, well, apparently I, wines and more don't don't deliver to deliver you. Deliver to you yes. out there. So Nick and I have a little bit of a relationship. We actually send email back and forth without always being on the show. So you reply that, all. Uh no, I don't reply <laughs> all. No, I just reply to Nick. But I tried to send him that screwball whiskey. And so I had it in the cart. Uh-huh. I, I went to Wines and More to get it delivered. No. I went to the new Uber Amazon, app. baby. Uh, no, Amazon did not have screwball oh, whiskey what? in there. So I, I, I have, let me just tell you, I, Nick, I have a screwball with your name on it. I got to figure out how to ship it. I think what I can do is I get this wine bottle type of courier services that we have. I'm going to try to cram it into that type of a box and send it to you. So that <laughs> I you have a courier that. apparently that can, that can <laughs> get it to at the drugs. The <laughs> that's ones that, that, drugs that's right. Like, <laughs> uh, it, all it's right. all good. I, I trade bottles with a friend and we just use FedEx. Do you use FedEx? Uh, probably <laughs> simple enough. That's what said, I need to you do. You got like yeah, eight, that's all we do. 80 bottles. So I, can there, see the, I see the Blantons though. I see the Blantons. Oh, you did? It's yes. Like, do, you, do, uh, do you like the Blantons? I do like Blantons. I do like Blantons. Okay. Uh, I, I, the the bottle's distinctive with the horse on top. Yeah, like, it is. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's Blantons. That's, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Garday <laughs> here is trying to say that he's related into this family somehow. Oh, well, I am. I'm oh, related. Really? I I am related to some Blantons in Georgia. I don't know if they're the same Blantons, but I am related to some <laughs> Blantons. You know what? Maybe I'm going to call him up and be like, "Hey, can I get some of this free?" Stuff? Let me just tell you, I am related to the mums in the mum champagne business in France. That makes sense. Hmm. But you know what? They have never given me a dime of anything, and I've tasted that wine like three or four times. Mum champagne, mum wine, whatever it is, it's the nastiest well, stuff. Well, that's it's, why. Oh, it's, it's, it's the so Canadian bad. mist of it's, champagne. It's Canadian mist. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Nick, I am so glad you're here. We're, we're going to be talking about Apple. Apple, Apple. I loved listening to your YouTube uh, deal about Apple. That was hilarious. I was laughing um, specifically, I am uh, working at a company, and they all just love Apple. And Apple is the most secure. Isn't it's Apple the, the most secure, no, and you can't get hacked? Oh, no, and- <laughs> that's the old. That's the old 
Come Justin on, I Long. watched I watched those commercials. I, I believed it all. Th- honestly, yeah. that's the brilliance of their marketing. It really is. I mean, nobody's going to deny that Windows is a bigger target, but I mean, we were just unsticking an apple like two days ago. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're very easy to infect. I mean, it's you know, you need antivirus, you need everything else, like you need any, anything else. It's it's absolutely crazy. So, yeah, it's all their marketing though. It's it's impressive in its own right, but it just has legions of Apple users feeling way more confident than they should be <laughs> in terms of their security. All right, let's talk about the the new Pegasus hack. Let's talk about this Apple last. Uh, it was not this last week that we had. Ago, it was two right? weeks ago. We talked just yeah. a little bit about it on the show, and I know I reached out to you, and I know that you were busy, and so I appreciate you joining on. Talk about the Pegasus hack. Yeah. All right, this is a big, yeah. big deal because it has huge the, deal. Uh, zero click hacking method. So let's let's talk about this. Tell me a little bit yeah. about this. Yeah, so so this is actually really interesting, and I'll actually tell you about one that predates it as well. That was essentially in the same vein, but there's a essentially a company out of Israel known as the NSO Group that uh, discovered essentially a vulnerability in in Apple in Apple products, iPhone specifically. And so they developed a software package known as Pegasus, and then they were selling it to things like governments, and the governments were basically getting these things onto the uh, onto their targets' phones, usually through things like messages and all of that. The, it would install, and then it would give the person basically, or give the government, complete access to the phone. And we are talking about everybody from you know opponents, uh, opponents and dissidents of the government, uh, Nobel Prize winners. Uh, party leaders around the world of governments. I mean, it is a huge, huge deal. Went on for years. Uh, Apple really was never fixing this, never patching this because they didn't realize it. Eventually it came to light and then they fixed it. And now obviously if you've got an Apple product, specifically the iPhone or an iPad, you've got to make sure that you've got that completely up to date right now. Because even if you had the latest and greatest iPhone, they would still just walk right into it. And they had everything, text messages, passwords, you name it, they could get it from the phone. They had total control of the phones. It was absolutely insane. Yeah. And interestingly enough, they're not the first ones to do this because we just learned in the last week that three former NSA contractors were just sentenced here in the United States uh, basically for failing to inform the U.S. government that they were working for the United Arab Emirates government on a project called Project Raven that was doing essentially this. They aided the UAE in surveilling other governments, militants, all this kind of stuff, um, basically by breaking into into iPhones and, and other devices as well. And is so, that the C? Uh, is that the CIO yeah. of ExpressVPN? Yeah, yeah, I, I, it might have been. It I, is. Sure it, well, we we talked about it last week. Take that, show. Justin Long. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, right? You know, like, and I remember those commercials too. I mentioned that you know in my in my video the other day. Like, you, did. you know, I'm a Mac. I'm a PC, and I'm secure. And John Hodgkins, the other comedian there was always the one that was infected yeah. you know so it, i mean it's 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 funny but it, it's it's sad that you know we've got legions like even to this day i walk into organizations as i'm sure you do and they're like yeah well we don't have antivirus or threat detection on our macs it's a mac yeah, you know it's, it's, it's safe like, it's taken know. care of yeah. we never have to be right. compromised at all so explain the zero click so this is essentially yeah, what's the zero I, click? I, I could be a well uh, let's have them explain it but i could be in an airport i used to do this all the time it w- in an airport, I'd sit in, uh, have breakfast. A kiosk? And, uh, no, just kind of like in the lounge area. Okay. And then I would pop up. It's a little different than the zero click. But I would pop up my own internet deal, and there was a s- software program that I could immediately capture. They would connect to my PC, and then my PC was connected to the other internet, and I would just throw up free internet, and I could watch everything that they text. It was it was oh so you're you're on the other side of this. I'm I, I'm talking about I'm the guy that goes into the airport and I'm waiting for my flight. So I to get on the free Wi Fi, get into the free Wi Fi, oh, and you're no. over there watching. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching you. You're connecting to the Seattle SeaTac super fast Wi Fi, and you're like, sweet, I'm going to connect to that because that's a open and available, and then I can see everything you talk about. But let's talk about what is zero click. How is this specifically a concern? Do I do I, somebody have to hack into my phone or what happens here on this zero click software? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because most most uh, infections or or most attacks like what you're mentioning, putting up fake wireless, you're essentially running a man in the middle attack. You're you're able to capture things as it comes in, or you're able to attack the front side of the phone as it's connecting to you. But zero click is interestingly enough, it requires no human interaction to actually infect the phone. 
So we knew before Pegasus that Apple had a very serious problem with their iPhones crashing if you texted a specific string of numbers to an iPhone. I would just fire off a text with a specific string, the iPhone would read it, and that would actually crash the iPhone. It was executing code yeah. because it understood. So when you are sending essentially a zero click threat to somebody, you don't have to tap it or do anything. The, the device that you are sending it to is reading that and executing upon a certain set of instructions that, that is basically integrated into the operating system. And as we discover those kinds of things, that's essentially uh, you know what, what Android and iPhone are attempting to patch. And so essentially you have no defense whatsoever. An attacker can basically send an exploit payload to your phone and, and basically with Pegasus, they were using corrupted GIF files, meaning um, as the as you got the um, a GIF or GIF, GIF, some people say GIF, but it's GIF. Um, it, it's, it's an image Thank file, you. but it's corrupted, basically and infected. And your phone, as it's drawing it, that little thumbnail in your, um, in your texting or your email or whatever, it's actually ingesting that information and infecting the phone. So you don't have, you don't even have to touch the picture or open the picture um, it, to, to be infected. It's very dangerous. Wow. And so it's, it's a huge, huge issue. Welcome to the matrix. Yeah. yeah. Matrix four is coming out. What, what, what's, what, what are they doing? Bringing back Neo died in, in matrix three. Now they're bringing it's him back. Called resurrections. Court. That should give you a clue. Well, you think he comes back? <laughs> well, this, never mind. Okay. I'm all right. Okay. Never mind. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So let's talk about what's the problem with Apple's core security system. So Apple touts that they're fantastic at this. Let's uh, and then after then we're going to take a commercial break. When after that break, we're going to be talking about some of their uh, other aspects. But specifically, what is Apple's core security system? How is it kind of configured, and what are some of the concerns regarding it? Both on a, a Mac, I have a Mac right here in front of me, and yeah. on iPhone and tablet specifically. Yeah. So in, in basic terms, they have essentially what is known as a closed operating system, meaning it, unlike Android, which is open source, you can build your own variants of it. They have created a closed ecosystem, which does not allow things like threat detection systems to actually integrate themselves into the operating system. You are relying on, on Apple's security configuration, essentially, to protect you. And in 2015, in Apple's infinite marketing wisdom, they pulled all of the antivirus from the App Store. Like if you go like look at like McAfee or Norton, you know, take your pick uh, of in the actual App Store and you read the fine print, it'll do everything except actually scan for threat. And their logic was that the vetting system for app development, in other words, the only place you can get an app for your iPhone is from the App Store, Apple's own App Store, unlike Google, where you can have third-party app stores, um, they said our vetting system is so good that essentially this is what's protecting you. And so uh, the security that essentially is, is uh, basically protecting the memory of what is known as the kernel in the, in the operating system of the phone uh, doesn't need anything. So, and obviously that entire system was broken three months later by a, a hacker named Exco Shell. We found out a couple of years later that the CIA had just been walking in and out of it, not to mention the fact that malicious apps actually do get um, published uh, in the store through, through the app store as well. And so by virtue of that, the app store is a little more secure and a little more vetted than the uh, Google Play one. Google Play is a lot more Wild West, but Android gives you every tool in the optional. You can install antivirus. You can install firewalls. Those are things that that Apple's integrated and say, say they're doing themselves. But here we have things like Pegasus that obviously is a huge, huge problem. All right, so, we need a commercial so break. What's what, that? Oh, what are you saying real quick, just so I understand, is that in the Apple Play store, they're basically saying, do it, you feel like you whatever you need to feel good about, but it's not going to work because we're going to do it ourselves. Well, no, so what they're saying is that when you launch an app in the Apple Store, that they spend so much time doing research to make sure that it's non-combative, um, that there's no security glitches in the code, that they do such a good job. Right, right, that they're going to they're gonna let you buy, they're going to let you download McAfee or whatever, and they're, they've just basically said, oh, this is just something that looks good. It Correct. doesn't really do anything. Yeah, you don't need Apple to download. So yeah, awesome. yeah, you don't need to have these other antivirus tools because we're just so good with our ecosystem that we will never be compromised. Dun, dun, right. dun. Okay. Which is where Google's much smarter, Marketing. and they just right. say, you know what? We're open source. Yeah, you can be compromised, so please be really careful on what yeah. you do. Be and, Google, and Google gives you every tool in the arsenal to to defend an Android. Yeah. Correct. You know, you can put things like DNS filters on, a, a, like web filters on an Apple and all of that, but try downloading an actual firewall or actual antivirus 
uh, into it that actually hooks up into the operating system and will check it, check the memory, won't. They yep. just don't allow it. So okay. it's a huge problem, I think. It's a huge gap. So what Apple. you have to do is then you have to buy all these high-end firewalls like WatchGuard, which is a high-end firewall that you have on the hardware system so you can then circumvent and make sure that your Apple products are safe. So mm. it makes it very expensive Whereas Android just says, you know what, we they can't They don't have want some to problems. squash innovation, right? Uh, yeah. That's right. That's why we don't right. want to go to USB C3. All right. So we're right. going to commercial break. Here's a question for you What is the most overstated promise that Apple has said in the last two years? All right. We're going to go to a commercial break. When we come on back, we're going to ask the expert Nick Espinosa that question. I'm Nathan. I'm your host. We got Mike Day here and David behind the board. We'll see you after this. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. All right, welcome to Tech Time with Nathan. You're joining us on hour two of the award winning technology show. We're glad to have you back. We have our expert from <laughs> Security Fanatics, Nick Espinoza, on the show. What's that? You just went there, didn't you? <laughs> I just went where? Never the two hour award winning <laughs> show. Award winning show. <laughs> yeah, we uh, award winning from Tech Time. We just gave ourselves an award. Okay. All right, it's kind of like an Emmy I, award. I used to, or, yeah, this is like going to the trophy shop and buying yourself for your own trophy. A particip- <laughs> participation. No, trophy. no it could be first place. Not a Razzie, though, right? Yeah. That's right. There you go, That's Razzie right. Award. Razzie All right. Award. All right, so when we last left, Nick, we asked the question what is the most overstated promise from Apple in the last two years? Oh, with, without a doubt. Without a doubt, <laughs> it is privacy. Privacy. Is privacy. The statement that basically says that 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 we are maintaining your privacy uh, in a way that virtually nobody else is with your mobile device is just demonstrably false. So, think about this. Earlier this year, they actually started adding privacy scores in their app store. Basically, kind of like, you know, how you can read the nutrition label on a cereal box and, yep. you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, they added those. And so you could go and you could look at like, oh, hey, Facebook. Oh, here's their privacy score, et cetera, et cetera. But what they didn't really tell you is that it's on your honor. They're self-scoring, meaning Facebook gets to score itself on privacy. <laughs> that's, like, a, that's like what? a participatory trophy. That's exactly like winning yourself an award when that's you really right. didn't have uh, an award. That's why no, I had not, that not. queued up. There you go. I mean, like, I, if, if I'm a police officer and a serial killer, I want to investigate my own serial killings. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Know, I'll never that. get caught. I mean, this is what we're talking about. And then, and then on top of it, they actually added, and I applauded them for that, the do not track. Basically, so if you're going to download it and install Facebook, which is going to track the bejesus out of you, yep. um, essentially, uh, Apple basically has a prompt that says, ask app not to track. And then you can enable that, and Facebook's not to, or, or any app is not supposed to track you. Um, and so basically, Facebook had this entire campaign of like, well, if we can't track you, then maybe Facebook won't be free anymore, you know, because this is how we make our money. Um, and it was a huge thing. But then we found out, we found out that because of competing definitions of tracking, that essentially most apps, when you click do not track, are still tracking you because they are running digital fingerprints on your devices, meaning they're capturing like your battery level to like five decimal places, your GPS, like all of these unique characteristics that make your phone unique. And then th- by virtue of that, they can start to understand how still to, to better hone advertising for you. <laughs> And so you're on this Apple and you're like, oh, here, here's Facebook's not tracking me because I click do not track and their privacy score is awesome. 
maybe Facebook's getting up <laughs> their like game. Me. Thank That's you, like Apple. Me. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's utter nonsense. And th- and this has all come out from like the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. I mean, you know, you can go read these articles in like the last couple of weeks. That's absolutely nuts. <laughs> See, I Apple, listen- Apple does not agree with the opinions of Apple. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was listening to Nick's uh, YouTube post, and that's why I set up that volleyball question. Yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah, guy, I love the, I love the. Yeah, that's low hanging fruit that. for me, man. That's because right. like, it just, it's unbelievable. And then, and then I, I just the gall of them in the last two years. Um, the last time they had, you know, at CES before the, I think it was before the pandemic, they had a huge billboard. Um, uh, in Las Vegas, that basically said like, "What goes on in your iPhone stays in your iPhone." Oh, look! <laughs> like touting the privacy. You can go Google the billboard, the privacy Apple billboard <laughs> in Vegas that what they had on this, like Vegas. the side of a hotel or something. That's awesome. But you know what? People so believe go. this stuff, though. Oh, I know. People yeah. believe That's, this stuff. Oh, yeah. This Apple. If you go to the Mac forums, and then there's a Mac we, forums there, people just eat we, this stuff up and they want, believe it. Well, yeah, yeah, we want we want information that is simple. Because that's why that's the way our brains want things. So if it's overly complex, we're going to create a simple way of doing it anyway. I mean, Poor Apple. Apple is just you yeah. know. And now, yeah, they're they This is like image engineering. They're they're trying to image an engine or engineer an image that that they're impossible to hack. That they're safe. That they're pri- because what does everybody complain about with Androids and I mean, and? But this is so. Here's PCs. what's horrible about Apple. Apple releases their new iPhone, Apple 13, right? Mm-hmm. And they have 70% of their existing subscribers that have phones in their ecosystem go out and buy the brand new phone. Well, yeah. Oh, so they, it's, they just, unbelievable. it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost a cult-like It is. A, uh, it is a cult-like type deal. It yeah. is. I mean, I've got to get the new phone. It's got to be awesome. Yeah. It's got to be right, great. Right, Even though I just right. bought one like, Two weeks ago, I need to buy an, the new one. Yeah, and then and yeah. then I'll make whatever I can with the dealership, and I can get it almost for free. I'll turn in my this back is, one, my is, old one, and I'll pay two years on a subscription at astronomical prices so that I can right. get my the, free phone. The the funny right. thing the funny thing about psychology is that nobody wants to learn psychology, but everybody uses it uses it against you. That's right. That's what that's yeah. what marketing is all about. Is just using your own psychology yeah. against Tim you. Cook comes Apple on stage and people this. just go, ah, oh, yeah, Apple woo-hoo, is excellent. You're the best that's thing yeah. in the world. That's, you yeah, know, Scientology, all these other things like that. Yeah. All right, so we're running up on time. We only got about like five minutes left. Nick, if you wanted to tell anybody how to be safe on Apple products right now today, don't for the ever for no for the everyday <laughs> common user, what would you tell them that they should be doing? Switch to Android. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Get no. yourself a Galaxy phone. That's right. No. Yeah. No. So obviously, you know, have a good, strong password. Uh, you know, four digit pins are very easy to break, even on an Apple device. Uh, you know, so make sure you're obviously you compare that with biometrics. You don't have to type in a long password. You can download things like web filters onto your phone uh, to make sure that as you are going places or your apps are phoning home, if you accidentally go to a malicious site, accidentally type in google.com as opposed to google.com, the the web filter will actually block you. And if you can't go to the site, you can't get infected. uh, You can't give away your information. And also the other thing you can do is get a VPN, Uh, you know, get a paying VPN, ideally out of a country uh, that is uh, that has really good privacy laws like Switzerland. Um, and, and your and favorite VPN, is your favorite is your favorite VPN. My service. favorite at the moment for personal non corporate personal VPN. You'll pay like 40, 50 bucks a year or whatever for five devices simultaneously is Viper V Y P R VPN. <laughs> By, right. uh, by my, Golden Frog. Yeah, so let me just tell you, so Mike fun, moved. That's so funny because I am the least tech guy here, but every time one of these comes up, I got the best VPN that's network. Cause, that's because we had a conversation. I told you what Nick told you to to upgrade when you asked me because I still am finishing my Nord VPN, and Nick hates Nord VPN. Yeah. He just, he, he just, well, maybe he maybe that's it. the case, but that's it's it. just really funny that I keep coming up, coming up shining on these there you go viper vpn is the service you should be using all right so basically good strong password web filter vpn those are basically your three core options in an apple all right nick we enjoy you joining the show i'm sure we'll have you back uh what are you drinking today what are you drinking today well i'm classing up the joint i mean if you did blanton's i have to top it okay so i went all out Oh, you do have a screwball. Look oh, at that. I'm still. Oh. Check it out. Oh, what, what do you think of screwball? Is it, it? It. I am. I am drinking my dessert tonight, my friend. It is that so is good. Honestly, you, 
you were not wrong when you said it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup in, in booze form. It's it, is, it, it, is, is it is ridiculous how good that stuff is. I know. And it's so cheap, too. I know. I mean, so. Oh, okay. Well, terrifying. I have, I have another <laughs> bottle with your name on that we're sending to you on the radio <laughs> show. So we'll Don't we'll worry. enjoy that. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. Bye, when Nick. we come on back, we're going to be talking about is your, bi- is your boss spying at you at work? We got a quick segment on that. So we'll see you after this break. Hey, babe, I hear that you can download a new voice on Siri. No way. Yes, it's true. It's a voice that goes, hey, you big honk. What do you want to do and where do you want to go? Stop it. Oh, God. (laughs) Okay, I'm kidding. What has tech ever done for our relationships? Mm, We can't talk about that on the radio. If you want to eavesdrop on juicy conversations that no one is having around all things love, sex, and relationships, join us right here, 1 p.m. on KKNW and wherever you get your podcast. We look forward to seeing you in the love shack. Your business deserves the same expertise as that of a Fortune 500 company. If you need a CIO-level service, why hire a full-time staff member at $250,000 a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost? As your CIO on demand, we'll give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks. To get an efficiency review for your business today, contact us at www.ee-services.com. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> all right. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mom. We got Mike Corday here and David Brown behind the board. David, you've done a fantastic job today. Thank you, thank you. All right. Here we're going to get right into this next story. Keystroke tracking, screenshots, and face recognition. The boss may be watching you long after the pandemic ends what workers should know about corporate surveillance software as companies consider permanent remote work policies. That's right. Work from home is a big deal. And yeah. guess what? 80% of the software purchase in the last year was to track you at home. That's right. Let's talk about it. Your boss could be watching you right now. How are employees using software to keep tabs on their employees? We have something here from the Washington Post posted regarding Carrie Litmore, an attorney for 34 years. She was hired this spring for one of the legal firm's fastest growing jobs. She expected to review case studies and files from her pandemic safe distance at her home in Nebraska. She then received a laptop in the mail with her instructions to get paid. She'd have to comply with the company mandated facial recognition system for every minute of her contract. If she looked away too many seconds from the screen or shifted in her chair, she would have to rescan her face back from three different separate angles and process to continue to do work. If she was unable to blink or not have direct contact with the screen, the laptop would come up with a warning sign saying, please look at your current screen and would have a continuous blinking camera. Is this allowed and is this right for companies it's ridiculous why is that this is all based out of our human need to control okay. so you know one of the things that the pandemic has done for us is is taken a direct amount of perceived control out of the employer's hands yep okay so so they they are feeling like they need to place more controls around what their employees are doing and you know, from working working from home myself, it's it. You know, it's easy to blend work and life, right? So that happens, right? So I'm doing something, and I get I get somebody coming up to my door to drop off a package or service or whatever. It's easy for me to stop to what I'm doing, go and answer the door. Where I can't do that in an office, and a lot of these a lot of these are are about this fear of loss of control. I mean, when I was when I was in cor- the corporate world, yeah. Uh, I remember somebody getting upset because I allowed one of my minions yeah. to get up out of his chair, take three steps to a door, wave at somebody and say, hello, come back. And the boss pulled me into a a room yeah. and told me that I lost the company four seconds of production time. All right, well, let's talk about this. There are software programs that actually keep track of your keystrokes. Yep. A company called Hubstaff, a software program that tracks productivity and part of its setup, it records keystrokes, takes screenshots, 
and make sure that you're looking at the computer continuously throughout the day. Yeah, I think that's BS. Then it allows the managers or managers to have information to make sure that they know their employees are working. This is this is completely against human nature. They need to knock it off. So 70% of the companies increase say that this is going to become a standard or 70% of the companies interviewed for this survey that they had said that this is going to become a standard for all corporate work from home policies. It's not going to work. Would you work from home if you had to have a screen look at you everywhere you went? No. No. But, but then I wouldn't work in an office either. So Okay, there you go. All right, all right. Well, David has given us a bunch of fingers. We're going to have to end the show. <laughs> that, that is uh, our second hour. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nathan Mum. we got Mike Roday here and David behind the board. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that mmm moment in technology today. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. And also signing up on our YouTube page where you get to see us live in video. Yep, you can see us chat and have some fun. It's youtube.com slash Radio. All one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.